Alright, so in this video we're going to discuss something that is quite interesting and pr probably you already tried to think about it. When, when we're taking the line integral, basically along a curve, we usually denote a direction in which the curve, uh, in which the integration is being performed. So you might say that you have a curve and you go from point A to point B, so that's your integration. And you find the line integral, and we know that if we have it in this form, basically for an integral of uh, a function of two variables, which is just a surface in three dimensions like this. So you have your x here, your y here, and your z here. Then you know that by taking the integral, or the line integral along the curve C, what you're doing is essentially just taking the area, the vertical area, underneath that curve, that follows that path C. So basically this area is going to be the value of that line integral. Now what do you think would happen if you got if you use the same curve but now you oriented it in the opposite direction? Would that actually change the area? Well in, in essence this area is just a scalar value, right? It doesn't matter which direction you're taking it, it's still the same area. It's not really changing at all. So you might imagine that Taking the, taking the curve from point B to point A should have no difference from doing it from point A to point B. So this integral right here should be exactly equal to this line integral. So how do we show that? Well, let's do a simple example. Let's suppose that we have some curve here. So let's just have a simple function. Let's say we have x squared all the way from 0 to 1 here. So this is going to be our curve C, and we're now going to integrate it in this direction and also in the opposite direction. And we're going to compare the two results and see if indeed we get the exact same answer. So we're going to start with the orientation going from, so let's call this point A, and let's call this point B. So for the case going from A to B, we're going to have the following. Well, we know that y is going to be a function of x, and x is the, is the independent variable, so we can make x the parameter of integration. And now the limits are just going to depend on x itself, so we're going to have 0 to 1, because we're going from point A to point B, and those are the coordinates of those points, the x-coordinates. Now we need to calculate the element of <coughs> integration ds, so we're going to have the following. So let's see what we get. Well, we're going to have dt dx, in this case, x is a parameter. We're going to have the square root of dx over dx squared, which we know is going to be 1. And then we're going to have dy over dx squared. And then this is going to become dx. And let's do square root of, this is 1, plus the derivative of this function, so that's going to be 2x, if we square it becomes 4x squared. And now, obviously we need to choose a function, so let's say that our function is going to be the following. Let's say this is the function, so now if we take the integral along this orientation of the function 8x ds, we're going to have the following, we're going to go from 0 to 1, and now we're going to get 8x times the square root of 1 plus 4x squared times dx. And now you notice that we can use the method of substitution here because if we take a substitution make this equal to u, then taking the derivative of that gives us 8x times dx. So basically this becomes u to the um, u square root of u. And now we're going to get the following. We're going to have 3 on 2, which is going to be the new power, we're going to divide by that, so we get 2 on 3 of u, which is just this, so we're going to get 1 plus 4x squared to the power 3 on 2, and this is going to go from 0 to 1. So let's see what happens there, well we're going to have the following. We're going to get 1 here, so that's going to be 2 over 3 times 5 to the power 3 on 2 minus 2 on 3 which is 
times 1 plus 0, so 1 to the power 3 and 2 is just 1, and then this is going to become 2 over 3 of 5, square root of 5, minus 2, actually minus 1. So this is going to be the value of that line integral within this curve here. And now we're going to do the same thing, but now we're going to go from B to A. So is that going to change anything? Well, not really, because our functions are still going to be defined like this. The only thing that is going to change is the order of the, of the values. So now instead of going from 0 to 1, we're going from 1 to 0. So x is going to define, be defined in this way. ds is still going to be the same, so we're going to have ds equals to square root of 1 plus 4x squared times dx. And now we're going to have the function is still the same, it has not changed. So now the integral, now we're going to represent it by the uh, opposite orientation, so we write minus c of 8x ds is going to be equal to, now we're going to go lower bound is going to be 1, upper bound is going to be 0. So let's see what that gives us. So we're going to have 8x times 1 plus 4x squared dx. And now we know we already know what this is. This is just going to be this function here. 3 on 2. And now we're going to go from 1 to 0. So let's see how that changes our answer. So now we're going to get the following, so we're going to have 2 over 3. So let's take that one out. And we're going to have, well if we put 0 in here that becomes 1. And then we're going to subtract minus, we put 1 in here that becomes 5, so minus 5 to the power of 3 on 2. And then this is going to be 2 on 3 of 1 minus 5 times square root of 5. Now you notice that even though technically these two values are the same, the only thing that changes is the sign. So this one is going to have an opposite sign to that one. So what this leads us to believe is that the orientation is just going to change the sign. So if we do this, f of x, y, ds is going to be equal to minus the integral from minus c, so basically the opposite orientation of f of x, y, ds. So in general, it doesn't matter which point you, you, you pick to start with, so you could say you, you could start with b and then go to a. The only difference is that, of course, you would just need to multiply that by a negative number in order to obtain the integral that you would from going from point uh, a to B. So that's the, the general idea behind this. So in essence it doesn't really matter which which route you take on the same curve as long as you keep this relation in mind.